I am here at the Niagara Falls uh, Museum, which is going to have the grand opening on July 22nd, 2012. Uh, the date is uh, June 20th, 2012. My name is Reginald Langas Ardu. I'm here with the manager of the museum, Clark Burnett. Yes. Thank you, Clark, for allowing us to come into the museum. We realize there's an awful lot of construction going on right now. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you is with the museum here, the Battle of uh, Lundy's Lane took place just up the hill there. Could you talk a little bit about the battle itself? Well, the battle itself, you know, we're, we are footsteps in, and in some ways the battle did come further than what we know now know. Um, we sort of celebrate the Drummond Hill Cemetery as it is now, um, but the battle didn't just take place on that small patch of land. Um, it, it certainly encompassed a much larger space and stretched up beyond Drummond Road and beyond Main Street down to this way. So we do know that sort of this whole area was a battlefield during that battle. And what happened essentially was by 2014, or 1814, the Americans have gotten much better at uh, uh, their tactics, their training, uh, their skill in war. And uh, the war was getting quite ugly by that stage. And uh, the Americans had amassed a large uh, segment of troops down uh, just south of uh, here in Fort Erie, had proceeded to march up to Chippewa, and there was a large battle there on July 5th. Uh, where the Americans routed the British, and the British had to retreat back to Fort George and eventually putting uh, positions in this area. And it was on the land at Lundy's Lane where the British decided to make a stand against the advancing American army. Um, thousands of troops uh, uh, joined at that, that battlefield at night. We believe it started you know, start around 7 o'clock at night. It was a twilight battle leading into the, the nighttime. And it was a very ugly battle, a very dirty battle, uh, a very mucky battle, and a very murky battle. Uh, one that, that both sides claimed victory very early on, but in reality both sides retreated because they were just exhausted from all of the fighting that, that occurred. The Americans eventually retreating back towards Fort Erie uh, and controlling that property, and the British eventually retreating back to Fort George. Um, it was a horrible night of devastation. Thousands uh, wounded and missing uh, following that battle. Uh, so many that, that, that many had never seen such carnage on, on Canadian soil before or afterwards uh, that uh, in one night battle just hundreds were killed uh, so many that they actually had a funeral pyre up there that was their only way to dispose of all the bodies on that battlefield which we call the bloodiest battle of the war of 1812. And there's also Lore Seeker's body is buried up in the cemetery. Could you tell uh, people a little bit about the story behind here because I know the United States has uh, Paul Revere, the British are coming, the British are coming, but Canada had his lower secret. Well, Paul Revere was an American revolutionary uh, figure and certainly a, a, a signature figure for them. Uh, they also had Fanny Doyle, actually, is an interesting story on the American side during World, uh, the War of 1812, was a female heroine that they had. But we have Laura Secord, and Laura Secord has been a story that's been around for a long time. Um, really, her story really starts coming out in the late 1860s, where people really start understanding her role and what she did, uh, at a time where Canada was looking for identity, for looking for Canadianisms. And really she became uh, that figurehead for the domestic Canadian uh, heroine uh, in the War of 1812. And what uh, essentially her story really goes is that uh, um, she had a husband who was in the um, Lincoln Militia at the time, uh, fought at the Battle of Queenston Heights and was wounded there. And uh, that's sort of where she, her, uh, her story starts with the War of 1812. He was wounded and the story goes that she tended to him on the battlefield of Queenston Heights, just steps from their home. Uh, they would have been right in the middle of all of this war, living in Queenston, certainly seeing what happened on October uh, 13th of that year. And uh, she was sort of uh, caught up with what was going on and really understood that there was a, a need to help out beyond, uh, um, you know, uh, beyond the, the, the norm at that stage. So I think she was very much uh, impacted by what happened at Queenston Heights and what happened to her husband. Uh, so the story goes is that, that as the war proceeded, um, Niagara and Queenston eventually got occupied. And the story is, is that their house was actually occupied by American soldiers uh, and that she um, heard of a plan of attack at the Battle of Beaver Dams. And her role within that was that she trekked to Beaver Dams uh, about 13 miles away to warn Lef uh, Lieutenant, Governor, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Fitzgibbon of the pending American attack. And uh, that journey is well documented, it's well chronicled. Um, historians have always debated how important was it or wasn't it, but certainly she personifies 
what it was like to live in those times, what it was like to be in an occupied territory, and the steps that, 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 that she went through in order to uh, help preserve what we now know as Canada is an important role in all of this. And, uh, and, and it's interesting that she eventually does get buried at, at a, uh, a battle site, essentially, that one that she didn't have a, a direct role in, but certainly uh, it's an interesting connection that she uh, uh, was eventually buried in a, in, in, a, in a battlefield itself. And with the grand opening of the museum here in July 22nd. It's actually 21st. Excuse I'm, me, 21st. I hate, hate, to, hate to correct you, but I don't want anybody, they can show up on the 22nd. We're free that day as well, but uh, the 21st is the big festivities. Uh, with the 21st, what kind of activities do you have planned and what kind of dig dignitaries do you expect to come to the opening? Well, the 21st is really what we wanted to be as a fun day. We wanted to show that this place is some place that can have fun, that can celebrate what Niagara Falls is. And it's really, we've, we've geared a lot of things towards activities and families and to have a lot of fun. Uh, we've got lots of acts, uh, bands performing out the back uh, of the museum. We've got a great courtyard out the back where we're going to have um, fifers and drummers uh, sort of starting us off. Uh, eventually we're going to be leading into, we have uh, mini militia being done by our, our friends at Old Fort York where kids can get to be soldiers and learn about some of the drills. Uh, but leading into uh, more contemporary times, uh, we've got a Niagara Falls All-Star Rock Band being put together by Rick Rose who's helping out with uh, uh, the events. And then X-Prime is a youth band that we have sort of ending off things out the back. Uh, we've also got bouncy castles, we've got strongman activities, we've got a uh, mural that everybody can contribute to. Um, we've got Niagara Falls Concert Band will be out the back as well at 1 o'clock uh, before we even open everything up. Uh, we've got scavenger hunts and kids activities inside and of course the biggest thing is that we will let everybody in to see the galleries in its finished, uh, finished glory and, and see uh, what history we're presenting to the public. What kind of artifacts can we expect to see on the grand opening and after the grand opening? Well, the, the, the artifacts on display, some of our key ones um, uh, deal with our daredevils. Um, we, we have some, some great artifacts related to that. Uh, our signature 1812 items include a great early portrait of Sir Isaac Brock uh, that will be on display, some great uh, um, items related to the Thompson family, a tunic from uh, the Lincoln Militia, as well as we have a great wedding dress uh, from uh, the War of 1812 era, uh, one that hasn't been on display for very, very long periods of time uh, that we're quite excited about. Uh, female domestic uh, clothing from that time period is quite rare and we're quite excited about that. Upstairs we've got some great interactives that we're putting in, but artifact-wise we've got a great baseball uniform from the Shredded Wheat baseball um, team. Uh, which sort of is, does two things. It talks about Niagara Falls' great role in recreation and sports and, and a true sporting tradition, but also shredded wheat and the, uh, the industry that was here. Um, Niagara Falls was a major industrial power in shredded wheat and Oneida and um, um, Carborundum and all those other companies were, were highly involved in, in the industry of Niagara Falls and sort of that, that talks about that. That's sort of one of the things I'm quite excited about showcasing is sort of that, that baseball uniform is a really neat little piece. So. Uh, we've also got some great stuff related to the fire department. Our water pumper uh, is going to look beautiful upstairs in the upper gallery. It was always on display in the old place, um, but it was, it was tucked in the corner, and it's a huge piece. It's hard to say it was tucked, but it, it, it's really going to shine in the new, uh, uh, new spotlight that we put on it as well. And I, I realize that you're pressed for time right now. Are there any closing words that you wish to share? Um, well, I just hope that everybody can come on out and enjoy it, whether they can come to the opening or the next day. Like I said, we're free the next day. Um, we want to make this place a, a going community uh, uh, environment. Uh, we open uh, Tuesdays to Sundays. Once we open after July 21st, we'll be open Tuesdays to Sundays, 9 to 5. But on Thursdays, we're going to extend the hours till 9 o'clock. And that'll be free for anybody to come on out. And we've also got a full lineup of things going on Thursday night. So every Thursday night there'll be some activity going on and you can take part in it or you might not want to. Uh, we've got a film series we're putting together. We've got some Regency dancers uh, that you can join in on, on their dancing and learn a little bit about Regency 1812 era dancing. Uh, as well as philosophers cafes and other things going on Thursday night. So this will be a place to be busy and active and going. So we want people to sort of come out and enjoy what we're putting together here. And finally, your website address so people can go and take a look at what's coming up. NiagaraFallsMuseums.ca Thank you so much for your time, Clark. Thank you.